welcome to Time with Irubad Ibrahim. And today promises to be as interesting as all other days. And we are reviewing the week. Uh, two major events have taken place in the past few days. Number one is the outburst of Otum Fawcett to the second, the uh, emperor or king or chief, so to speak, of the Asante Kingdom. And the accusation is that um, some two key people close to Ghana's current president, Nanado Danko Akufuado, His Excellency, um, are plotting to undermine him. That is the accusation. And when uh, a high-powered delegation of the party went to his palace, they had to kneel down to beg him. So tonight, we assess the relationship between the chieftaincy institution and governance. What role do chiefs have to play? And again, presidents come and go. Chiefs remain till they die. Before Otunfo Osoetu II, the there was Otunfo Pokuari II, who ruled from 1970 to 1999. And throughout those 29 years, he outlived Ignatius Echampon, who was the head of state at that time in 1972. Then came General Akufu. Then Hilal Imam came into the mix, of course, with Jerry Rollins. And eventually, uh, he died in 1999. Then Otunfo has been uh, the overlord, so to speak, of the Ashanti Kingdom. Uh, in the past 19 years or so, from 99 to 2018. And during this period, he witnessed the twilight of the reign of uh, Flight Ref Lieutenant Jerry Rollins as a democratically elected leader. Then, then came uh, former President John Ajikum Kufo, then Prof. M Mills, then Dramani Mahama, and now Nana Dudan Kufuado. So fundamentally, the sojourn of these chiefs normally would go longer than how long any president can continue to be commander-in-chief. So we ask, could the um, chief or say to Asantehini of Kumase or Ashanti region have done better looking at tackling this issue diplomatically uh, rather than publicly naming people close to uh, His Excellency the President? And what have these two gentlemen done to warrant the ah and anger uh, of the Ashanti king? Arguably, the Ashanti kingdom commands the largest numbers and the largest territory, uh, so to speak. So it's quite an influential, you know, kingdom that can make and unmake precedents. Uh, so we do a critical analysis of what happened. Uh, you may as well start sending your text messages via WhatsApp, and our WhatsApp line will be um, displayed on your screens shortly. Uh, send your views on this subject uh, to our WhatsApp line 0552-225-911. Uh, you can find it on the left uh, corner uh, of your set now. Um, as Asante Hene overreacted, or the people who are purportedly plotting to undermine him, should they be whipped in line, so to speak? These are the questions we, we ask today. Uh, we go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, we listen and view what happened at the Manchia Palace when a high-powered delegation paid a courtesy call uh, to Tung Fo Saitu II, the king of the Ashanti Kingdom. Stick and stay with us. And welcome back. For anybody who is well versed with the political history of this country, chiefs have always played a pivotal role. And when the British came to Ghana and they adopted what has come to be known in historical books as indirect ruling. Um, during this period, they, they gave their decrees and injunctions and instructions uh, through various chiefs, and therefore the stature and status of chiefs 
um, is quite great in this country. And therefore, at any time there is an overlap between the chieftaincy institution and the governance system of this country, eyebrows have been raised. And this latest round of row between the Ashanti Kingdom and the Achim Kingdom, uh, or Paramouncy, um, has come to a head, quite unfortunately, even though Ghana's rules since the First Republic have indicated that chiefs cannot and should not take part in active politics. But then, which political party wins an election depends upon the geographical demographics of this country. And we know and the second half, the upper half of the country, to a large extent, pays allegiance to a certain party. And the lower half um, has felt it towards a, pot a particular political party. But interestingly, both the Ashanti Kingdom and the Achim Paramouncy fall within the second you know, the southern half of the country, and you would think that uh, they, they have allegiance to the ruling NPP. So what is causing this schism, uh, so to speak, and acrimony between the Achims and the Ashantis? And I believe the time for us as a country to do a dispassionate and unbiased analysis of the situation uh, to prefer lasting solutions is now. Uh, so you can share your views via WhatsApp and our WhatsApp line is scrolling uh, on your screens. Um, there is a communique that has come from a group that calls itself Concerned Youth of Ashanti. And the one leading the charge is one Dr. Nana Ajenim Boaten. He says, the title Ochehene does not exist in the books of Ghana's chieftaincy ministry. According to him, while the Asante king rules over a kingdom, the chieftaincy ministry only recognizes the title Achim Ibuakwa Mahene uh, for the Achim Ibuakwa traditional area. Dr. Ajenim Boatin said in an interview with a sister station earlier today, quote on unquote, they always want to compare the paramount chief of Achim Ibuakwa to the Asante kingdom, which is impossible. When you go into chieftaincy, I've worked with the chieftaincy ministry before. We don't even have anything called Oche Hene, but we have Achim Ibuakwa Mahene, end of quote. He explained that the Achims have three clans. The Achim Kutuku, which is a paramountcy, Achim Ibuakwa, another paramountcy, and Achim Bosomi, the third, the third paramountcy. But he says the Asante king rules over a whole kingdom. So is it an issue of ethnic supremacy or the supremacy of clans rather than looking at bread and butter issues that would tackle the myriad economic challenges faced by the people of this republic? We go for an insight uh, of what really happened when leaders of the ruling party, the MPP, uh, pay the courtesy call to Otum Fawcett to the second and the ensuing um, plea they made to him to pardon the purported two individuals close to the president who are seeking to undermine him. Stick and stay. Anti regional, okay.
Okay. Um, so you have on your screen, uh, on your screens, pictures of individuals who took part in that important visit uh, to Manshia Palace. You have His Excellency the President in a warm embrace with Asante Hene Otum for Osei Tutu II. Um, the notion out there and the jury uh, out there is that uh, these important chiefs have a very cordial relationship with just anybody who is elected president. And therefore, there shouldn't be any seeming conflict in terms of Chieftains institution and political actors have for the Republic of Ghana. Um, uh, here is the president with the Otun Forsetito. John Boydou is the acting general secretary of the party. Uh, he was part of that high powered delegation that went to the Menshia Palace in Kumase. Um, he was accompanied by the Ashanti regional chairman of the ruling party, uh, Mr. Bernard Impribosiakon. Uh, he's called Chairman Wuntumi, and other leading figures uh, like the regional minister for the Ashanti region, Simon Ose Mensah Honorable, as well as the regional coordinator of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, uh, Mr. Kobna Century. Uh, so they were there, and they had to beg Otum Fosai to to the second, uh, because uh, two key people, uh, close to His Excellency the President, uh, purported to be making all chances uh, or carrying out actions that are antithetical uh, to the well-being of the Ashanti Kingdom. One of them has flatly denied uh, such an allegation, saying that it's against political strategy uh, to mess, so to speak, with the NPP's World Bank. The Ashanti region gives more votes uh, to the incumbent party than does any other region of this country. Uh, so therefore, uh, it's quite hazy and the facts are not too clear as to what kind of activities were carried out by these gentlemen to undermine the uh, king of Ashanti, uh, Utum Fosse to II. Uh, so you can share your views and we are storytellers in this country and uh, there are people that knows so much about the relationship between the various major ethnic groups and clans uh, in this uh, country. Um, so it will be interesting to um, know what you think. I will soon open the phone lines uh, when we lump this issue up with another issue that has to do with uh, His Excellency the former president and the utterances he made during the unity walk in the same region. Ashanti region. Ashanti re the Ashanti region has become the crucible uh, of very hot discussions uh, throughout this week. So send your views on this first subject uh, via the WhatsApp line and that is on the uh, lower end of your screen. And there is a message, the number is 0552 0552 225911. This message is coming from Kofi Konedu. Kofi Konedu, you are sending this text from Kumase. You said, hmm, these M MPP guys, they don't respect Kra. How dare you try what you are trying to do? Um, but I, I don't know. Um, Mr. Gabi Ochre Dalkon, formerly the head of the Dankwa Institute, um, has come out with a short statement to indicate that his hands are clean and it would be the height of stupidity, so to speak, in his words, uh, for him to do anything that will run counter to the well-being of the Ashanti Kingdom, knowing so well that a chunk of the votes uh, that, come to, that go to the NPP come from uh, this region. And I don't know, they say in unity or united we stand and when you listen to the national anthem of the republic of ghana uh, one undertone is that we have different shades and colors of people a small country like ours dozens of languages are spoken local languages so many tribes and therefore if one tribe or clan 
should be on a collision course with another and then certainly we can't make any headway as a country and so therefore we are treating this issue because it's been considered a taboo subject for so long many people were saying anytime the npp would be under the leadership of uh, somebody like our current president and he won an election and then the Asante Hene Otunfo Osoitutu the second would be undermined. This was an allegation that was flatly rejected by the MPP uh, during the campaign trail. And therefore we need to know uh, what is really happening and if there needs to be any intervention. But surprisingly, even though there is a National House of Chiefs, the Ashanti stool has played a very important role in virtually all the elections we've held since 1992. It has even become a tradition in the past two or so elections that it will be this king, and uh, Wutun Fosay to the second, who would bring all flag bearers of political parties on one platform to make a pledge and commitment to Ghana's peace and stability. Uh, so therefore, this is an arbiter. He has been you know, mediating in various conflict situations, even go to the north, the Dagbon crisis. As Antihene Otunfo Osoitutu is playing a very important role uh, in resolving that issue. So now that the king is embroiled in a seeming conflict, so to speak, uh, with, I use the word conflict euphemistically, uh, with the ruling party, who keeps the peace and who makes the peace, so to speak. Um, Eric from Yeji in the Broaf region says, better they went on their knees. And they actually knelt down and to beg that Santa I'll introduce the second, you know, subject. And you can contribute to both and very soon we'll open the phone lines. The NDC lost the election in 2016 and it lost by a very great margin. Uh, it only gleaned 44.4% of the votes that were cast. And the NDC was separated by the victorious party, the NPP, in that election by votes that ran close to 1 million. Uh, so therefore, this has been one of the most significant losses in the political annals of this country. So since the loss, party bigwigs and party foot soldiers have been engaging in what they call unity walks. So every now and then you hear on a Saturday in various cities across the country, there has been one in Wa, there has been one in, in, in Kumasi recently, and many other cities will ensue. But during his address to the teeming party faithful uh, that took part in the Kumasi unity walk, former president Dramadi Mahama made some claims and those claims have been rejected by the ruling MPP. Uh, if MCR is ready, uh, we go straight to Kumase and listen to what the former president, His Excellency Dramani Mahama said on stage when he addressed an NDC party faithful after the unity walk. Okay, so we, we now listen to the former president, Dramani Mahama, on how Galamse should be tackled. Legal small-scale mining. Illegal small-scale mining. Eh, wo musa sa e jumano si a bon ho baya e be se ya sa se no. And so, ya di nyansa en ya di ye. If he said, if he said, sir, I did hear this soldier for a day. Actually, I'm not going to do illegal small-scale mining. No, I hear it. So okay, I hear it. I'm going to go. I'm so angry, Juma. And he, 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 he said, we will bring a new mining law. A better regulate this. Sir, Galamsey. Now, I'm a Juma. No. It's me a coso, ama am a we in the no, it's me a year in ya be a And so, 
But for Kasamu, you better say, if you put a blanket ban and then you send soldiers after the young people, that is not the way to go. As, as you stop illegal small scale mining, at the same time, you must put in place a livelihood package so that as you are displacing people from illegal mining, they have something else to do. But when there's nothing to do and you're just chasing them and shooting them, it is not the way to go. And in Tempara, I was saying, I share regulation. See, normally you should papa ba, send a bayer. They will do it within the law. Before the year election, I told you that we're coming with a new mining regulation. We've not been able to implement it. But the, the law is there. I'm coming to commission. Now, I'm going to implement it. Send it there. You have nothing to do. Everything me and your baby can do. I show my mom. And now I'm going to hear my mom. And see, where the madam was saying, you're not here, bread. You're not here, bread. Now, you are making it say, you are making it say, you are making it say, especially at the grassroots. Now, me who are on the air, any pride that you are for, and they are so NDC moon. Now, me with GDA pass 2020 NDC. Everything could be. 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 If we say NDC is tried and tested, your track record, eh, wo ho. And Obi Beka says submission, and your submission, and your name. The former president was addressing party faithful and many people have done a post analysis of his choice of words. Some think you should be like former president J. Okufo or former president Jerry Rollins. Um, but those former presidents have been speaking. How you speak is very important. Of course, there is a world of difference between those past two presidents and this one. They did their eight-year term, and there was no way they could seek re-election. This one had his um, expected two terms truncated when he lost to the incumbent president. Uh, so should Germani Mahama, His Excellency, be blamed uh, for poking his nose every now and then in the policy directions of this current government? Or she, he should act as a statesman and keep mum about what is happening? He made some claims. One of them was that his government had handed the olive branch uh, to people involved in small-scale mining and that uh, they were working hard to provide a policy framework to allow them to work in an atmosphere uh, that wouldn't degrade uh, water bodies and land resources. Um, is that true? And also, there was a task force that was tackling the issue of illegal small-scale mining. How far did the task force go? Were people's excavators confiscated and burnt? Or they treated the issue in a much, much better way than the current, you know, government uh, is treating? He also says the shoot-to-kill policy, and that was reported in some mining areas, would only imperil the lives of young men that are only trying to eke out a living through such an activity. So what did His Excellency mean, uh, the former president, by these utterances, did he mean that Ghanaians 
would give people the opportunity to go back to the pits and the alluvial water bodies and creeks uh, to mine gold. Contrary to the vision of the current president, His Excellency Nana Adudanko Akufuado. But the government didn't keep quiet about this. There was a swift response from the sector minister, the Ministry for Land and Natural Resources, Honorable Peter Amewu. And let's take a listen to what uh, Peter Amewu said in response to former president Dramani Mahame's comment on Galamse. I respect that man, but for today, I'm much disappointed in the words he said when he was in command. Okay, so on your part, how soon are you uh, expected to launch this MMI? Very, very soon. The document has been outlaid. We're waiting on the president to come immediately. The president arrived. This document is going to be launched. And that is the way forward. This document has been, you know, accepted by the whole of the sub-region. People are traveling all over from other countries to have a look at what we are doing. Donors are buying into it. Just a week ago, the World Bank was in the office. The Canadian Embassy, the, the Australian, the Chinese, they have all played in a role because of the potential of the document, the input, which involves a lot of stakeholder engagement. What has Mahama been able to do? Well, I have not let, seen anything on small scale. Let me scales. take you back to his era. In, in his era, he had a regional tax force to deal with this illegal miners um, led by honorable units of... They were, destroying the, the, they were destroying all kind of equipment. Untu me then was having a lot of equipment. You know, you heard of it? But Mahama and his people destroy it. Have eh? have they, they have destroyed it. Today, we have, destroyed. we have created a lot of mining districts. We've created 12 mining districts and 33 satellite district we are you know bringing the mining back to the decentralization level the small scale mining which was in the status book was supposed to have what we call mining communities this has not been inaugurated for all the years mahama has been in president we have just inaugurated the mining communities bringing mining to the community of the owners of their resources decentralization this is the approach and so I am so much disappointed in him. Of course, he cannot address the problem. I'm telling the small scale miners that this gentleman, you know, is a con man. He's deceiving them. If they dare go in for him just because of Galamse, this country will be in the. I mean, it will come down. We should follow the honest man in this world, the most honest person who is ruling this country. Nana Ado, Dankwa Akufuado, has an alternative to address the small scale mining. And we will do that. No, President Mahama, he has failed. This is not the time for him to come back. And I promise. <laughs>
Isaac Kodia from Asin Fosu says, I'm an MPP supporter, but look, I don't see anything wrong with the former president's speech. He was just on point. And this is from Anthony Duku from Nsuta in Nsuta Ashanti. He said, we should all respect our traditional leaders. They were here when the white rulers came. This is from AJ, um, living in um, Koforidia. He says the MPP has failed on the tactics it employs in fighting Galamse. Good evening, Mr. Irubad. I'm really enjoying every bit of this program. I just tuned in to it. Maybe if you can walk us through the main stories again, Thanks. In anticipation, Tanko Ahmed Yusuf from Sefulgo. And Tanko, we are assessing two issues, issues that trended in the course of the week. At Santehini Utunfo said to the second and the ruling NPP. And the second issue has to do with the unity work of the opposition NDC that took place uh, in Kumase. And the comments of the former president, Jomani Mahama, His Excellency, uh, on the fight against illegal small-scale mining and the ensuing response that has come from the sector minister, Honorable uh, Amewu, Lands and Natural Resources Minister. So you can contribute via text and I'll soon announce the phone line uh, so that you call. Uh, Eric from Nsawam says, why should Peter Amewu uh, respond to this? Mahama just spoke the truth. Um, join us via phone on 0302 9047680302904768 uh, uh, the number is boldly displayed on your screen um, and those who are also sending us text messages the number is also there for you to see and uh, the text line is 0552225900 zero five five two 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 five nine one one and the number to call us on is zero three zero two nine zero four seven six eight zero three zero two nine zero four seven six eight uh, so therefore yes the second deputy i think first or second deputy speaker of ghana's house of legislature even came out and said the fight against illegal small-scale mining is supposed to be robust and he didn't mind whose ox was God if young men engaged in this illegal activity are shot and killed uh, so he made a proposition um, for the shoot to kill approach hello your name and where you calling from hello my first caller your name and where you calling from Okay. Well, you welcome to the show, my brother. Uh, I want to comment about that the land, land minister spoke about John Berman. Okay. The way you spoke to the uh, former president is not good at all. The former president. And what in our way of is to do is to look at the people in Ghana who are working this time to work. Now, because of the suffering of them, they are not getting anything to do again. As I'm sitting here now, I'm a worker of guarantee. Having this to do, so that is my work that I'm doing. And you came and stopped the work, and then the man was complaining about it, and then you are getting it. So, um, thing is uh, hello, hello, my brother. <laughs> hello. Um, yeah. have, you worked, hello. have you worked in that sector before? Have you mined gold on a small scale before? Yeah. I went at Takwa Bogotu. And you are out of business now, aren't you? Pardon? You are out of business now, aren't you? No, 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 I don't have anything to do. So where were, you in, anything. where were you in the value chain? Were you an administrator or you were directly involved in mining the alluvial gold yourself? Uh, I'm, I'm a, 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 I'm
as an excavator operator. And how much were yeah. you making daily or weekly or monthly? And if you the list the list you could get was how much? The list you could get was how much per month? One thousand five hundred. Uh, yeah. So it's not true when people say you are spoiled children, so to speak, you earn 5,000 Ghana cities or 10,000 Ghana cities a month. How lucrative was the business before the government clamped, started clamping down on it? Yeah, you said you have to find the land and get the water. But do you admit you were destroying our lands and water bodies? Do you admit that? No, we are not destroying our any water. We are using the land. They, the land that we give to us, that is the land that we are doing. And we sometimes when we do the work, we have to cover the, the roads that we pick. We have to cover it. So were you doing that? Were you do, reclaiming the land? Yeah, we are covering it. We are working with some Chinese at over there. We are covering after we have to work. We have to cover it. So um, fi finally, if you have anything to tell government, what is it right now? If you had the opportunity to address His Excellency the President on this Operation oh. Vanguard. I think I will have because we stand up there uh, working to that when I came and they came okay now. But when he came now, he is the person who is calling the government to the way. No, but so then... We are clear. Have okay, you... We are going to do one on that and open up. But are you, I'll ask this finally, and this will be the final question, um, so that I take yeah. other calls. Uh, are you ready to be gainfully engaged in any other industry apart from the small-scale mining industry? Maybe if you've gone to school to some level, are you ready? If government is ready to uh, fund your education so you get a white-collar job. And if you're an artisan, are you ready to take any job other than uh, the excavator you were driving at the time? I don't have a really big this, this kind of work that I didn't give to you. I'm not going to be a wealthy to write. I can't write. I can't read. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate your call. And that was an individual who has been involved directly in what we call Galamse in Ghana, illegal small-scale mining. Um, uh, keep your text messages coming. I'll read your text uh, from Bolga shortly, but there is another caller. He hello, your name and where are you calling from? Good evening, Brother Ivan. Yeah, good evening. Your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Edi, calling from Tabora Alaji. Okay, Edi from Tabora Alaji. Uh, make your point, Edi. Uh, I just did a television and I saw you making the program. But I couldn't even the story of the program. But that's what the caller just ended. I, I thought it's all about the recent, the Operation Vanguard. Okay. That the president wants the financiers to stop. Yeah. Activities. Yes. If I'm right. Yeah, you are right. It's one of the subjects. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, I thought uh, it's a good call for the president for making that effort and all of our business that what the president did has been made an effort. We saw our events have been changing, going to a normal state when we visit from the very That's all the team. As the college just ended, you know, before you put a stop to somebody's job, you have to find a, the person in facility. Because the reason behind all this, some of them are engaged in robbery and other jobs, which is not good for a uh, woman, you know, a nationalist in that kind of job, especially when you see robbery and other kind of uh, jobs. And people may change, even taking drugs and whatever, because of what they the uh, caller just ended. That used to end almost thousand five hundred or five thousand a month. So if this uh, this man is earning thousand five hundred or five thousand a month, and you promise to give that person a seven hundred job, uh, uh, well, have you have you been that this person? Uh, e e e e e please let's not uh, over. Idi, uh, e hello, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Let's not over politicize the issue. Napco as an alternative job opportunity for people that have acquired their diploma or degree is different from Galamse and the fight against it. Uh, so why do you compare the two, so to speak? No, 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 no. 
I'm not, I'm not make, make it comparable. So what's your point, E.D.? Okay, brother. Then, you know, w uh, what, what we ask the president is, a good to a president created a job to his people because that's why we voted him at the, at the office. Okay, thank you so, so much for making your point, E.D. Um, you can contribute to the two issues. Uh, as Antony Otunfo said to the second, and the little challenge government has with him, so to speak. And your text messages should continue flowing. Hello, your name and where you calling from? Yeah, hi. Your name and where you calling from? Please, I'm calling from. My, my name is Boate. Okay, Boate. And which of the two issues do you want to comment on, Boate? Please, my name is Boate, calling from Kumasi. Okay, Boate, you're welcome. Which of the two issues do you want to comment on? Um, good evening once again, sir. Um, uh, yeah, I can hear you, Boat. Uh, I was late on your program, so I wasn't able to hear well exactly the topic that you lined up. But um, if I may take my, my tip here, um, concerning the yeah. Galante business show. <clears throat> yeah, please, and um, carry on, sir. Okay. My concern is, I, Ibra, I, I want you to help me to understand this. Assuming with your profession now, if indeed the government sees a security threat to it, it become a responsibility for the government to find you another profession provided it fall within that remit. Um, my, my background, my career background is in diplomacy, and of course, I worked for foreign interests, and I don't think it would have posed any threat. But then, we are... Uh, hello, hello, my brother, are you on the, on the line? Um, we, uh, yes, we are talking about a profession that employs tens of thousands of young people, some of them semi-literate, some stack illiterate. So don't you think the earnest lies upon government to mitigate any impact of wholesale redundancy by providing alternative jobs, Boache? Okay, um, um, a little plea to our viewers. When you call, you can either put off your TV set or lower the volume so you don't listen to yourself. It gives you a feedback. And uh, so you can call the line. And um, hello, hello, your name and where you calling from? Hello, your name and where you calling from, bro? Yes, my name is uh, Batakari Ababio. I'm calling from Nungwa. Okay, and from Nungwa in the uh, in Accra. Okay, welcome to the show, Patakari. Thank you. But speak up a bit, my brother. Okay, I will then talk, eh? Yeah, you can speak up a bit, yeah. My name is um, Batakaya Bifo from Nungwa. Okay, you can uh, make your point, yeah. I, I've been at many mining sites in Ghana, and I, I've uh, bought diamonds and gold from all, almost, almost all the districts that I've known. Okay. Up to now, nobody has been able to explain the difference between Galamse and then uh, legal mining, which is a small legal mining. We have small legal mining, which is being monitored and also has been directed by the Mineral Commission to the inspectors. And we have also the illegal mining called the Galamsey, which don't have any documents to it. Yeah. So what is happening is, if licenses are even given to the legal small-scale miners, when they close jobs, between Saturday and Sunday, the illegal boys in town will go to that mining site. And what they have worked, we call it failing. You go to work on the tailings, these are the people who directly spoil the rivers. And so now, the difference between Galamse, which is illegal, and also legally, which is a small scale mining with license and inspectors from Mineral Commission, has not been explained. So, so which, which category, uh, uh, hold on, sir, which category of people is Operation Vanguard clamping down on? Have they merged everybody, uh, or they are tackling only those in, engaged in the act of illegality? Very good. Now, the Operation Vanguard, according to the government, now, every, whether it is illegal or legal, 
there must be a hold on for a new structure to be made between the government and the mineral commission so that we know which way to go forward. So the officer Vanguard doesn't know the difference between the Galamte guys and also the legal guys. And as so someone uh, going, uh, as going for anybody at all because there are some equipment. The illegal miners who got Galamte they don't have. And excavated mining machines and so many other things, washing machines, concentration machines, you know, are being used by the legal people. And normally, these are people who are taking license and they are waiting for it. And um, you, so you, if now the President Guard is going forward, they should be able to distinguish in between the illegal boys and the legal boys. Um, but it sounds as if when they go, they have to go with mining inspectors so that they can distinguish very well. They know who to attack and know who to attack. Um, the way you are speaking, it looks like you fall within the value chain. You've mentioned buying diamond and gold from some of these mining centers. Where yeah. do I place you? Did you have boys under you that were working or you just waited for people to finish the job and you'd only go there to buy the end product? When I go, what I do is, if you go to the site, the legal site, with the legal mining site, you go and then you produce alliances from the, uh, uh, what do you call, Mineral Commission, and also PMMC, Precious Minerals. They'll give you a license to go and buy, and when you buy, you bring what you have to the PMMC. They'll value it, and then buy it, and pay you. Uh, so, so I've been buying from them. Okay. But when I go, I could see that on Saturdays and Sundays, when the legal miners are closed, because normally they are working for four or five days, when they close, these illegal miners go into their pits, and because they are in hurry, they do anything and wash into the river. Okay, thank you but so you much. The, thank you. Thank you so much. Your input from Nungwa has been quite helpful. Uh, it's good we are listening to people who are directly involved uh, in the mining sector so that it gives the general Ghanaian people an appreciation of what we are contending with uh, currently. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Hello, can you speak up? Hello? Yeah, your name and where are you calling from? Uh, please, I'm calling from Akwetia. And your name is? Akwetia, you still again. Okay, Akwetia is also one of the mining centers, I suppose. Idris Wadama. Uh, Idris, so you can put off your TV set and you, you will still hear me. Yes. Uh, concern about the small scale mining, how to contribute. Yeah, please do. Okay. Now you can hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess uh, I'm going to contribute about small scale mining. Uh, the problem we have in the small scale mining that uh, it's an institution. I think the money, the small scale money has an institution at the Mineral Commission. But the problem we have that this government came, you didn't go to the small scale money. And it's very painful that it's not institution who's banking for the small scale money. One, uh, that is the uh, EPA, two, Mineral Commission, and we have a different permit. That is uh, the problem we have that. This government came, what does that mean in legal mining? Because you have a large scale, those who can enter to operate, there's no bank can tell you them. That's why you see the other way, they what land will destroy about the general uh, state people. Because those who have a large scale, they need to protect the land. They don't want to the machine can enter there and mine without any uh, question. And as a small scale man, my question is only 25 acres, the government gives to me. And I'm easy to protect that 25 acres. And there's a lot who does the small scale money. Even if someone enters the court as a small scale money, we can take the person to court. And the mineral company will come and witness we have a legal document to protect you that those who are doing that they can post it there because that way it's there. It's all about the law is not there. But when it's painful that this government came, it is for some of those who have a license. Okay, thank you so and much, my brother. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's a call from Aquitia. Yeah, people are quite angry, and especially the young people who have no other skill set uh, to be gainfully employed. They've known no job uh, throughout their young lives but this one, and therefore they need to provide viable alternatives. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Welcome. Um, welcome to the show, and speak up a bit, my brother. 
I said my name is David, calling from Ankesim. I'm calling from Mankesim. Is your area a mining area? I want to talk about the NAFTO. Is Mankesim a mining area? It's in the, in the central region. I don't think it's a mining the area, is it? It's not a mining area. Okay, great, great. I want to talk about the NAPCO. NAPCO. You want to talk about NAPCO? Um, yeah. Sorry, it's not an issue we are discussing. We are discussing two issues. Uh, the seeming on pass between Manshia Palace and the ruling party. And the issue of... Uh, Mohammed's comment, the former president's comments uh, on the Galamsey fight and the response that was given by um, Makamewu, the minister for the sector. So please stick to these two issues. Hello, your name and where are you calling from, please? Yeah, hello, my name is Iman, I'm calling from Tetsuman. Okay, Iman from Tetsuman, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Yeah, please, you can make your point. Yeah, I just want to tackle about what um, our former president, Please Obama do. said. Please do. Yeah. Um, we Ghanaians, or most of our Ghanaian citizens, are just accusing our former president, your mama, about what he said. But to my ideology, it's like um, he did not make any thing about the guarantee. He said, the Ghanaians are suffering nowadays. So please, the Minister of Natural Resources should go and apologize to our former president about whatever that he said. Because nowadays, the Ghanaians, we are suffering. The only thing that they can do to help us is concentrate and go. No, no, my, my brother, how are you suffering when you are in Mankesim? You are hundreds, if not thousands of miles away from mining centers. What are you suffering from? Oh, sorry, I lost you. <laughs> yes. Uh, a few messages. Um, this one is from Chris. Uh, Chris, you sent this from Kumasi. My disappointment has to do with the former president's comments on Galamse. He actually spoke like a serial caller instead of a much more educated and experienced person who occupied the national, highest national office. Ghana almost sank to the ground during his tenure as president because um, a village... Oh, please be decorous in your text messages and calls. But you continue, Ghana doesn't even need mining to survive. Why is it that the English premiership alone is bigger than the Ghanaian economy? Uh, you say EPL is bigger than Ghana's economy. Um, another text says, these Galamseyers know nothing about land degradation. They are just talking anyhow. Another text, in fact, I don't think there is any readily available alternative livelihood uh, for these Galamseyers. And also there is a thin line between Galamse and the so-called small-scale mining. They all degrade the lands and pollute the water bodies. But of course you heard from someone involved in the trade that reclamation is done by those who have licenses to operate. But even in Mr. Irbad, I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with what the former president said. The NPP should have found a better way of approaching the fight against illegal mining instead of shooting to kill. I'm also disappointed in what the minister said about the former president calling him a con man. They should deal with the real issues and stop calling people names. This came from Moomin from Bali in the northern region. The choice of the government uh, is either to protect the environment or allow the illegality to destroy the environment. No gray area. This came from Ebenezer in Tiamwa from Nkawie. Good evening, uh, bro. I'm not, I don't agree with former President Mohammed's speech because you know that Galamse work has destroyed all the lands and water bodies in Ghana. But still, you are supposed, you are telling them they can continue. It, 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 John Mahama, 
I swear by 2020, you are not coming back to power. Yours is not to tell whether someone will win or win and lose an election. You should stick to the issues. Vector from Akumadine. Uh, I think Akumadine is either in the Ashanti region or the Ebronhoff region. Um, another texter says, I don't think there should be a compromise when it comes to protecting the environment. The water bodies and vegetation being destroyed are critical resources we can't, we can't afford to lose in this era where climate change and global warming are the real threats to human survival. How can we allow and see indiscriminate mining of a non-renewable resource as an employment for the youth? It is even unsustainable and will be a real threat to national security in the future as some politicians and the chieftains are becoming involved. The ban on Galamse is a bold step in the right direction. As I said, opinions are like noses. Uh, so keep your text messages coming. Uh, it looks like you've relegated the first issue to the background. Uh, to the second um, received a delegation from government that went to the Menshia Palace to beg him on behalf of some two close people to the president who have been accused uh, of trying to undermine the Ashanti stool. And why this rivalry between the Ashanti kingdom and the Oche kingdom, so to speak, and in the spirit of non-interference in the governance process or politics in Ghana, as stipulated in our constitution. You can comment on that issue via WhatsApp on 0552-225-911. You can find the WhatsApp line on your screen. And you can now call 0302-904-768. We take a few more calls, then we call it a wrap. This, this is a message from Tanko Yusuf from Savulgo. He says, you see, Mr. Irbad, uh, I don't care the, what the incumbent government has to say in begrudging anyone. There is nothing wrong with what ex-president Mahama said. As regards Galamse, I personally deem it fit that government should find an alternative solution to the problem instead of the current approach. Thank you, Tanko Ahmed Yusuf from Savulgo in the northern region. Um, Director, I hope I can take a few more calls. Uh, zero, okay, 0302 904 768. Uh, 0302 904 768. Or you can send us your WhatsApp messages to our WhatsApp line. Uh, 0552 225 Some have proposed that the former president... Dramani Mahama, His Excellency, should just keep mum and stop talking. Others have said he can't keep quiet while he sees things go amiss in terms of policy formulation and the vision um, that has been crafted by the current government. Of course, maybe he has an intention of seeking re-election. Um, we have a caller on the line. Hello? Yes, so it's 0302. 904768 uh, 0302 904768 those are the numbers to call and again the issue of ethnicity in Ghana's governance process uh, yes yes the issue of ethnicity in Ghana's you know governance process and what we can do uh, to take away this seminar acrimony between two major ethnic blocks uh, the Ashantis and the Achims. But of course, uh, Otum Four said to the second, we are told, mentioned two people's names. But up to this time, we don't know what really they did uh, to undermine the Ashanti stool. Be that as it may, we are a nation united despite our linguistic differences, despite the fact that people are born in different geographical areas, and despite the fact that we are even welcoming uh, to people from other countries. And I believe Ghana wins when we are united. Uh, as Ante Hine Utumfu or said to the second, 
has been a chief arbiter in major conflicts in Ghana. And I believe you will have the big heart uh, to forgive anybody who has said anything or done anything to undermine uh, the Ashanti stool. And of course, the issue of uh, the fight against illegal small-scale mining. Those have been the trending issues in the past week. And we thank you so much uh, for contributing in diverse ways, whether via text uh, or phone calls to this discussion. So we come your way next Tuesday with another edition of Time with Earbud. Good night and stay blessed. Thank you.